Hello and welcome to the standardisation webinar for the Level 2 Technical Certificates in Hairdressing, Cutting and Styling and Colouring Services. My name is Debbie Webb and I'm the Principal Moderator for the Level 2 Technical Certificates. Before I begin I'd like to highlight the lines of support for all technical qualifications. There is a range of guidance documents found on the City and Guilds website under the Technicals and Tech Back tab. Secondly, the Technicals Quality Team will give, can give you email or phone support. Their number is 0300 303 5352. That's option 2 and then option 3. Their email is technical.quality at cityandguilds.com. And finally, many vocational areas have technical advisors who will visit your centre and give face-to-face -face support as required. City and Guilds have recently produced some bite-sized webinars which give generic guidance, but today we aim to give you subject-specific standardisation support using some candidates' work from last year's synoptic assignments for the Level 2 Technical Certificates. So let's look at the objectives of this session. To explain the synoptic assessment, to provide centre support based on last year's synoptic assignment on evidence collation, that's completion of practical observation forms, production of clear justification of marks in the candidate record form, highlight good practice in the use of City and Guilds documents to facilitate a standardisation activity and a reminder of typical activities for internal standardisation. Firstly, let's just review the synoptic assessment requirements for last year's exam series, clarify some of the terminology use in the assignment and paperwork requirements around their evidence of assessment. The assignment brief. The assignment brief is to be given to candidate four weeks before the start of the synoptic. This is the brief only and not the breakdown of tasks. This is so the candidate knows what services they will need to complete on the day and can source their models appropriately. They know they will have to plan their services and review them afterwards. The synoptic is made up of three tasks. The first task requires the candidate to carry out a consultation, including any tests, agreeing the service requirements with their clients, planning their services and timings, and an image should be included to show their planned service outcomes. The expected look. This task is given one and a half to two hours, depending on which synoptic is being completed, and can be carried out seven days prior to the completion of their services, which is the task two part of the synoptic assignment. In task three, they are expected to evaluate their performance. This can be carried out up to three working days after task two and one and a half hours is given for the completion of this task. Moving on to the synoptic task twos themselves. In the cutting and styling task two, the candidates are required to do two hair ups and not combine these looks above into one look. This is so that the it is hoped that the candidate will show, uh, showcase a wider range um, of techniques and their skill at um, managing different hair types and, and influencing factors. In the cut colouring um, services assignment, um, we talk about combining services. Um, now, when we talk about combining services, we talk about combining the colouring services with a, with a finishing service, a blow dry or a set finishing service. Um, it is not um, referring to combining the colour services. Um, to complete a highlight or low light service and infill with a colour would be a level 3 technique, a combi combination um, of colour and this isn't on the level 2 syllabus being assessed. Such action as straying from these requirements could disadvantage candidates. You know, they might make a mistake, maybe they miss a bit during application or the falls might slip a little bit more from the root 
Um, and it might be something that m might not have happened um, had they been completing the foundation services that are expected um, at level two. Now, moving on to the um, tasks of the synoptic assessment and looking at the paperwork really um, behind that. Task one, this is the performer that is used to produce consultation records. Consultation records and service plans must explain the service choices for each client and provide images of the looks or the colouring results of the, that are expected on the outcome. To achieve higher marks, the candidates should be encouraged to reason their choices, perhaps comparing and discussing alternatives to make clear the thinking behind choices, with tailored recommendations all demonstrating breadth and depth of knowledge and understanding across all services. The work produced must be done so under supervised conditions. It is collected by the tutor after the allocated time and must be dated and authenticated. We last year had um, declarations of authenticity um, for each task in some case in some centre uploads. There is a requirement only for one um, declaration of authenticity to, to um, authenticate the, the assignment as a whole, the work of the, as a whole um, as being the candidates. So um, this will be expected really to be completed at the end of the assessment as a whole. Task two, the practical element. Task one consultation performers are given back to the candidate at this stage so that they can recap their consultations with their clients. But these must not be added to or amended to. They are for reference use only. The time for task one has already been allocated. These can be used by staff for a reference point to see how the services should be progressing. However, the knowledge and understanding demonstrated in these should not be judged and commented on the PO forms as part of task two. But when marking of the assessment is done as a whole, when it, all three tasks are complete. This year we saw some overmarking in AO1 and 2 because knowledge and understanding demonstrated in task one have been recognised again on the PO forms in task two. And as a result, when the CRF was completed, the marks were allocated too high, having acknowledged the same knowledge and understanding um, repetitively. Having task one as a reference in task two should reduce the need to orally question the candidate or um, unnecessarily interrupt the candidate in their flow of offering the services. Although if changes are made, then sometimes oral questions might be used to ascertain the depth of understanding in regards to reasoning for the adaptations. However, care must be taken not to lead in any way. Knowledge can be observed by the use of products, tools, equipment, and the safe working practices um, and the um, professional behaviours that the candidates will demonstrate. If a candidate has a substituted uh, has to substitute a client due to unforeseen circumstances, then a verbal consultation will take place at, at the start of the service. The observer will take notes on the PO form documenting the level of performance shown here. The candidates would then discuss this in their evaluation, their task three, and any adapt adaptations that were required. They would not at this time be expected to fill in another task pro forma um, or complete any sort of written consultation. Just to recap on some of the hairdressing services, um, on, in hairdressing and cutting and styling the candidates are required to um, do a haircut. If the haircut is one length, it must be above shoulder. We have had instances where this is not the case and it, you know, it, it does state clearly that the haircut needs to be above shoulder in these instances. The wet set should be shampooed prior to the placement of the plea and the hair should be um, wet shampooed for cutting. The, as we mentioned before, the colouring services, it's combining them is not a requirement as that will come into level three. So they are expected to do two clients, one for one colouring service and one for the other. 
Um, in the cutting and styling, we mentioned before that two hair up looks are required. And when the candidates are doing hair, their hair ups or, mer, or their highlights, where it mentions a percentage of the hair or head that needs to be covered or completed, then, then this must be met. Hairstyles are expected to flow and be com commercially feasible or viable, you know, and all work should be carried out under supervised conditions with the tutor recording the quality of performance and the practical observation forms are something that we're going to revisit later. It must be noted here that the candidate must work independently, that this is an end assessment, you know, reflective of a trade test. It makes a decision on their ability to provide foundation hairdressing services and as a result those candidates gaining higher marks must be able to work with accuracy, consistently demonstrating high levels of skills and or de dexterity. They should be able to adjust their practices to suit client needs successfully and deal with a level of complexity. The form we see on the slide here, the candidates will use this form during the completion of their practical um, client services. Now they may complete this during, as they go through their services, um, using it as a working document or it may be completed directly after the services have been provided. Either way, this is to be completed as part of task two. Moving forwards, going to have a look at some photographic evidence. Now, in, in the picture here, well, you know, we must make sure that photographic evidence is as clear um, and close enough to get the detail and you know, as clear as we possibly can. Um, now, in best practice, we've seen photographs uploaded in PowerPoints and they've been clearly labelled or they've been inserted within one document after task one and before task three. Um, and I can't um, emphasise enough really how um, important a concise upload is. Um, but looking, looking at the photographs we've got here um, in front of us, you can see that the photograph on the left, it's much easier to see the, um, the, the detail and the professional finish um, that it is in the photograph on the right. And this is about positioning and the light, lighting um, really on the positioning, especially particularly on dark hair we find um, this can sometimes be a problem. So, you know, please take care when you're, when you're taking photos to think of the lighting um, and how that um, is affecting the outcome and how much detail can actually be seen. Now moving on to some more photographs, um, here on the left we can see that the hair and the gown are both dark and also with the angle of the um, shot in the background we can see sort of units all on an angle. Um, this, this doesn't help us to be able to see, um, to verify that the balance of the haircut is accurate on both sides. Um, you can see here it's very difficult to, from this photographic evidence, to um, fully authenticate, uh, fully verify that indeed, you know, this the hair is um, accurate and, and the balance is accurate on both sides. Um, the the second image shows a lovely curl movement, um, but it doesn't capture the whole look. Um, obviously the image on the right hand side is much better. This shows us the whole look. It's important when capturing um, the process and the outcome that the shots fully reflect the level of performance in order that it can be judged and verified um, with accuracy. Moving on to task three and the evaluation. This is the performer that candidates will use um, in order to do their um, evaluation of task three. Um, now, to gain good marks, they must critically evaluate each service that they carried out during task two, discussing what went well and explaining areas for improvement. 
In doing this, the candidate will likely describe how they might deal with the issues that perhaps came, uh, they came across and display understanding of how they could improve on the services and or the outcome. You know, candidates evaluation needs to be reflective rather than a descriptive account. They must be able to reflect on their pro practice rather than just giving a running commentary of what they did. They must show clear links you know, of their theory through to their practice. Moving on to uploads. Here we have some examples of some uploads. Um, I thought it was clear when I put it on the slide, but I'm now wondering. We've got one <coughs> across the top here and um, two, one to the left and one to the right. Um, all of the assessment documentation on this on the synoptic for the synoptic um, assessments or assignment is on the qualification page of the website and these are available either to be printed or electronic ones for completion. Um, in best practice we've seen one document per candidate and the assessment's been collated in logical order of the tasks, then the declaration of authenticity and then the assessment documentation. And it's all been converted into one PDF afterwards, um, obviously for security reasons, because signatures on it and things. Um, you know, however, you know, it, acceptable uploads would be um, to have a document for all of the tasks, um, a PowerPoint for the images of the task too, but these need to be clearly annotated so we know um, what service and what aspects of the service are, are being shown. Um, and um, the, the assessment documentation. Um, so we've had these, these three documents, one with the tasks in, one with the pictures in, and the other with the assessment documents in, all in one zip file. Um, again, that's a not fairly nice, concise um, upload and that's quite acceptable. What we can't manage at moderation, and this is due to the time constraints um, and also the viewing of evidence, is when numerous files are uploaded into a zip file. We have had instances where individual pages have been uploaded um, or individual images have all been uploaded and that's, this isn't, it just isn't feasible. Um, to be looking at evidence in that way in mo moderation and also for all of us it makes the portal much slower um, in those instances. Obviously the more concisely that we can upload evidence um, the better the functioning of the portal is um, and obviously that easing um, things for all of us really. Now, moving on, we're going to look at the um, marking grids and the assessment objectives, um, the use of PO forms, which are the practical observation forms, and the candidate record forms, which we commonly call the CRS. <coughs> so excuse me if I use that terminology. Um, first of all, looking at AO1, this relates to the subject knowledge um, which is delivered during the course. So examples of where we might see this are in the candidate's use of technical terms, their selection of tools, materials, products, equipment, and the processes, and how aware the candidate is of health and safety when they're preparing and carrying out their services. You know, their ability to recall fact and reflect this within their practice. Our AO2. <clears throat> moving forwards. AO2 is all about understanding. Here we are looking at the understanding of concepts, theories and processes. How well do they justify their actions and explain what and why they are doing? Their explanation should be in sufficient depth and detail to show comprehensive understanding in order to score the higher marks. There are examples in all of the AOs of where you might find the evidence. So here we have examples such as how they interpret the test results, their planning methods or consideration of the factors. Understanding is seen in what they say or write. In a practical situation, you may have to ask questions before you can de determine how well they understand. 
but these must not leave the candlelight in any way and become intrusive, as we mentioned before. Sometimes listening to the candlelight, you know, obviously as they do their consultations or as they're discussing elements of the service with the, with the client, you know, the, at times like that, you can pick up um, the understanding and the depth of understanding that a candlelight has. We are now going to move on to AO3, which is the practical skills. Their dexterity, fluidity and confidence and ease of application. AO3 is assessed in the synoptic in task 2. This AO is all about dexterity and technical skill. How practised or fluid is their hand-to-eye coordination? How confident are they at using these skills to reach a good end result? If a candidate receives good marks here, their skills should look fluid and second nature, their outcomes be accurate and professionally executed. Moving on to AO4, bringing it all together, this is about how well the candidate can use their knowledge and skills to solve problems or be capable in a new situation. How employable are they? Could they deal with a client that they've never had before? Can they adapt their practice? Can they use what they know about colour or cutting etc to achieve good results in anyone's hair? In addition, this AO assesses their time management, their organisational skills and creativity. A candidate scoring good marks in this AO would make you feel confident that they could deal with different situations without becoming flustered and it affecting their level of customer service and the outcome of services. AO5. This is where we mark their attention to detail. This AO checks how well the candidate focus on their tasks. Could you call them a perfectionist? Were they consistently focused on getting a good result or did they lose interest as the assessment progressed and forget to cross-check their cut or consider the influencing factors and finish on their final look, for example? Take care to evidence what they did to achieve these marks, as these should mainly come from the performance in task 2, rather than how well they wrote their evaluation, although obviously performance is considered across the assignment as a whole when allocating marks. This brings us nicely to the completion of PO and CRF forms. The PO and CRF forms can be handwritten or completed electronically. Just ensure that handwriting is legible, particularly when the document has been scanned, as your moderator needs to be able to read the evidence. PO forms are a critical piece of evidence that the centre observer produces during the practical performance. If completed well, these notes will bring the performance to life. Observers should describe how well the candidates performed against each assessment objective. The band descriptors should be used as a guide when making comments, but not copied word for word. We're going to have a look at an example of a PO form documenting the performance in AO1. Here we can see that the observer has not has has wandered off and included comments that perhaps are not specific to this AO. We can see here in the first sentence that the candidate is considered to have worked safely throughout. However, there are no examples of what the candidate did well to substantiate this comment. The second sentence is applicable to AO3 and AO5. It is not applicable to this AO as it discusses the confidence with skills, AO3, and the accuracy at which the looks have been achieved, AO5, and so is not knowledge recall, AO1. Both of these comments need to be substantiated with examples of practice to corroborate the judgment. The observer mentions good knowledge recall of scientific fact, hair classifications and influencing factors, but how is this evidenced in their performance? The understanding considered to be lacking when making adaptations must be recorded in AO2. Demonstration of professional behaviours through good hygiene, the ability to appropriately sequence services, the use of a range of techniques with accuracy does demonstrate the ability to recall or show knowledge and is correctly placed in this AO. Looking at another example, one for AO2, here we can see 
The selection of products is recall of knowledge. Understanding would come from their successful implementation to a situation. However, understanding is demonstrated in the staggering of foils, the removal of foils. This shows understanding of the detrimental effects of the outcome of overprocessing. And the successful outcome of a toner implies that there was sufficient understanding to make an accurate choice of product, tone and the processing time. Limited use of opportunity to advise and promote could be a lack of recall of procedure, which would be applicable to AO1. It could be a lack of attention to detail, AO5, or indeed understanding of the products and services and being able to tailor the advice to the individual's need, which would be AO2. Here the observer needs to be clear on the reason for limited aftercare. This is empirical with evidence which can only be judged by the observer and one of the reasons the PO form is so important in the process. You know when you're watching a candidate you and and you're in the situation at the time you as an experienced tutor you will be able to pinpoint with each candidate you know whether that is uh, the reasoning behind it is understanding or whether it is perhaps that they you know lack that um, knowledge of it being general procedure um, or, or they lack they, they that attention to detail to um, sort of you know follow up on those finer details of the services ways of determining understanding in a practical performance which can either be discussed with the tutor or with the client you know the candidate is about how they explain why they are completing a process or how they might change a course of action or you know how they justify their actions or their explanations of the consequences of perhaps doing or not doing something Here we have an example of two PO forms recording performance for AO4. As you can see, the first provides no justification for the judgments made. It does not bring the candidate's performance to life for the marker or the moderator. Whilst the second makes clear what happened on the day and how the candidate responded to this, their ability to be able to integrate their skills and knowledge and apply to a situation, in this instance unexpected, and still be able to perform, we can actually visualise the events and as a result make a much more informed decision on the marks that will be likely to be allocated once all tasks are brought together. Questions to help you evidence this AO would be, how reasonable are their actions? Is it considered good practice? How well do they draw from the breadth of their knowledge and skills? How confident are you in their ability? Would you have them do their, your hair? Do they look like they know what they're doing or saying? How well do they reflect on the theory when solving practical problems? You know, they know what to do. Just because they've written about it, they may not be able to bring it into practice. How well can they work out solutions to new contexts or problems on their own? Was there any usual, unusual factor to consider? Did they have a new client or a new requirement that they had to deal with at short notice? For each service, how commercial was their timing? Does it reflect their plan? What are the expected timescales for what they did and were they adhered to? Here we have an example of AO3 that clearly documents the strengths and weaknesses seen in the services carried out. The use of descriptive comments allow us to identify the aspects of practice that were weak, good or better to level the performance. The marker and moderator will need this picture the description generates to be able to make a judgment, allocate and verify marks awarded with accuracy once the assessment has been completed as a whole. The CRF. When the candidate has completed tasks 1 to 3 and handed them all in, this is when we holistically mark the assignment and justify our judgments in the AOs on the CRF. There were a number of instances in 2019 submissions when the PO forms and the CRF were duplicates. 
This led the moderators to believe that maybe only task two had been considered when allocating marks across the AOs. Whilst it is expected there will be information drawn from the PO forms and this used to inform judgments and marks allocated on the CRF, centres must ensure the whole assignment is considered at this point, marks allocated accordingly and the comments on the CRFs are reflective of this to sufficiently justify the marks awarded. The example on the slide gives an indication of where centre, the centre believes the candidate might be on the scale of marks by use of keywords from the grade descriptors. Neither details sufficiently the specifics of the performance that would substantiate the marks allocated. Level of performance here can be more, clean, more clearly and fully substantiated by comments relating to the accuracy of sectioning and perhaps application of products etc. The frequency of checking, do they just check outcome or check progress throughout consulting with the client as necessary? Do they accurately check work with purpose and using the correct technique or is checking just a fleeting consideration not really used to positive benefit? When they, when they ensured their finished looks were polished, what, you know, did they account for the influencing factors such as the head and face shape? If they were attentive to the client needs, did they demonstrate, how did they demonstrate this, you know, adjusting the chair, are they noticing and reacting appropriately to client body language? Did they take care to get it right the first time? The comment on skills being methodical and of a high standard belongs in AO3, where assessment of skills level is made. Here we are just considering their attention to detail, the level at which they strive for perfection and meet that. How did the accessories enhance the look? Did the candidate strategically place to enhance the feature of the clients or, or the hairstyle, demonstrating attention to detail? How does all their evidence in the task tie together? Have they followed through on the factors they identified in the plan to successful outcome showing attention to those details? Here we can see a more comprehensive description where it is documented the different methods a candidate used to check work, cross-checking, use of mirror, visual checks, and as a result it can be clearly seen where the judgment on marks has come from. The marker is pinpointed in the evidence, the evaluation, where the candidate has demonstrated attention to detail by notices in the areas that either did not go as planned or that they may have made improvement on. This use of more descriptive comments and pinpointing the location of evidence in the candidate's work demonstrates better practice. Moving on, here we can see an example of a CRF for AO2 that demonstrates good practice. The mark has clearly shown that all the tasks have been considered when allocating marks. They have pinpointed some areas in which where, it, where understanding is demonstrated and given an indication of the judge level, judge level of this performance, which has led to the mark allocation. Over the years, we've had a few questions regarding grey boundaries and using these when assigning marks. This is not considered best practice because as you know the grey boundaries are subject to change on an annual basis. Concentrate on assigning marks accurately and making sure that the evidence supports this. Another important point to make here is that the bands do not relate to past merit or distinction. They are merely there to help you with your initial judgement prior to the fine tuning of marking the whole assessment synoptic assignment. You know, it gives you a area um, to slot the performance in before thinking, okay, you know, what what evidence have I got to take that candidate into the band? Are they at the top of the band or the middle or the bottom of the band? And helps you to be able to mark um, hopefully um, more accurately.
Here we have some typical examples of standardisation activities that you're advised to carry out in your centres during the year. Mock assessments can help candidates to gain confidence in the process and observers to align and level their comments in regards to the quality of performance. Consistency is key, so compare judgments of the same piece of work to ensure that standards are the same between observers and markers. Use a standard approach to capturing ev photographic evidence, you know, using a designated area where the lighting's good, different backdrop co um, colours, so light and dark, so that you know whether the hair's light or dark, we can we can see those finer details that they can be captured more easily. When it <coughs> when it comes to evidence, you know, try to maybe use the word versions of the assessment documentation. Then the document can be added to all the way through to task three. You know, the photos can be transferred electronically um, into the document and saved in logical sequences. Electronic signatures are, are accepted um, and this can avoid having to print documents off and then having to scan them um, in to upload. You know, if, if it's not possible, you know, maybe just a declaration of authenticity um, will be needed to be scanned and uploaded. Um, Please remember that the candidate must not have access to these documents in the time between tasks and once the task is completed it cannot be added to or amended. Centres must not provide any written or verbal feedback to candidates on any part of their assignment until it has been completed in full or marked. Candidates must then be advised that the marks are pre-moderated marks and could be subject to change. Make sure when you do these activities that they're, they're at different stages through the year. Don't leave them to the end when the candidates have completed their synoptic because this is not beneficial and it can lead to marking being over or over generous or under, mark, under marking um, which can result in those marks being adjusted during the moderation process. And finally, before we close, I'd like to point you to the support which is, we touched on earlier. These are the links to documents and resources that City and Guilds have available. I would like to draw your attention specifically to the qualification report, which, deal, which details the data coming out of last year's um, results, along with hints of how to avoid how to avoid some of the pitfalls that centres may have fallen into during the 2019 series. It includes a narrative on the synoptic assignment, along with the two external exams, and I'm sure that you would find it helpful. I'd like to close this webinar now and say thank you to everyone for your time. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.